quickly go over what we just did about representables. We started with saying, given any object in the category C, there's a representable functor H sub A that goes from C op to set, which sends A to, no it doesn't, it sends any object X to the set of morphisms from X to A, and then given any morphism, uh, given any morphism F from X to Y, what we get is pre-composition by F. Okay. Now the next thing we said was that we actually can turn that into a functor from C to the category of functors from C or to set. So we send A to this functor H A. Now we need some uh, a bit of notation. So I'm going to call this H blob because what it does is it takes A and it puts it where the blob is. Now supposing we start with some morphism F from A to B, then what do we get over here? We get something that goes from H A um, to H B. Right, so this has, has to be a morphism from H A to H B, and it's called H sub F. And what's its component? Well, a component of this has to go, we've got to have a component of H sub F at X, and it's got to go from H sub A of X to H sub B of X, because this is a natural transformation from H sub A to H sub B. This is the morphisms from X to A. This is the morphisms from X to B. And so what this is, is post-composition by F. Post-composition by F. Now, we should point out over here that if this is a morphism, F is a morphism from X to Y, then this one goes in the opposite direction. This goes from C of Y comma A to C of X comma A. Whereas this one starts from C and ends in the category of contravariant functors. So now what we really need to do is show that this thing here is really a natural transformation. Because all I've told you so far is what this thing here, what it has as its components at X. So we started with a morphism here. We wanted to produce a morphism here. What are the morphisms here? They are natural transformations. We've defined our natural transformation component-wise. Now we've got to really show it's natural. So what would naturality say? So this has to be a natural transformation in here. So we've got to be careful about our ops again. Let's just draw out a generic naturality square for this. Uh, it would say, given any morphism, let's call it G, from X to Y, we've got, we've got to have a naturality square that looks like this. So we're going to have to have H A of Y going to H B of Y at the top via the component H F at Y. Then down here we've got to have H A of X going to H B of X via the component H of F at X. Now coming down here, we've got H sub A, the functor applied to F, or G. G goes from X to Y. So when we apply this contravariant functor to it, it goes in the opposite direction. And similarly here, this is going to be H sub B applied to G. Right, now let's see if this thing commutes by writing it out a bit better. Um, this top left-hand corner is H sub A of Y. So this is the morphisms from Y to A. Here we've got the morphisms from Y to B. Here we've got the morphisms from X to A. And here we've got the morphisms from X to B. Right, now let's see what the morphisms in this square are. This top one is going to be this component of the natural transformation, so that's F 
decompose with black, and so is this one. Coming down the side, we're applying this to a morphism. So that's this one. So it's composition on the other side with our morphism G. And now we can see if this actually even type checks, because we're going to start with a morphism from Y to A. Let's call it S. We're going to send it over here by composing it, pre-composing it with F. Okay, F goes from A to B. So we're going Y to A to B. That is a morphism from Y to B. And now what happens when we come down here? We're going to turn it into a morphism from X to B by composing it on the other side with G. X to Y to A to B. So here we've got G, here we've got S, and here we've got F. Now I hope you're beginning to see what's going on here. Um, if we come down this way, we're going to compose with G first. So we get X to Y to A, that's G followed by S, and then we come along here and we'll get X to Y, and we're going to post compose now by F, X to Y to A to B, so this is G, S, F. Now of course what's really happened here is here we did the S and the F part first and then did the G part afterwards. Here, we did the G and the S part first and did the F part afterwards. So this naturality square is actually telling us, is actually the same fact as associativity of composition in the category. So the fact that this is a natural transformation is the fact that composition is associative. So really nothing at all has happened. You should feel like really this is a very, very kind of fundamental natural transformation it's just capturing one of the most basic axioms of the category, so it's almost completely content-free. It's very, very fundamental. And in fact, this is called the Yoneda embedding. So this is called the Yoneda embedding. And it tells us that we can embed a category inside the category of pre-sheaves in a very nice way that looks a bit convoluted, but it gets faithfully embedded in here. We can't prove that yet, so I've called it the Yoneda embedding without actually proving that it's an embedding. In order to do that, one thing we can use is we can use the Yoneda lemma. So the next thing we're going to do is talk about the Yoneda lemma.